Hello, I'm for the Caterpillars, and today we are going to do a how to build your own skincare routine type video. I apologize if the lighting is not the greatest. Um, it's kind of a gloomy day outside. I have the lights on in my room, so I'm hoping that it will help light up the room, um, but <laughs> the lighting is not the greatest. I really wanted to film today, and I don't have another time this week to film, so I'm filming now because no one else is in the house, so yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Um, this is just like what I've gathered from the internet. I am no by means a skincare expert. I did not go to school for skincare stuff, dermatology or anything like that. I'm not in the industry by any means. I just am like fascinated with skincare. I love skincare. I love skincare. I love skincare. I have like a very in-depth like lengthy skincare prod process. Like my skincare routine at night is probably like up to 10 products long maybe. Like I use a lot but I really like it and I really enjoy skincare so I like doing stuff with my face like taking care of my skin and stuff so this is kind of my interpretation I know there's a lot out there um on how to build your skincare routine kind of thing or you know because it's confusing when you first start you're like what do I need what do I want what what I want to look for on a product and there's like so many options out there and you're like do I want affordable do I want expensive like was there a budget friendly option out there kind of thing so we're kind of gonna touch in a little bit on this I'm not like a huge like I'm a skincare <laughs> ad I wouldn't say junkie addict but I really like taking care of my skin and so my skin some days has like my skincare routine sometimes has like a 10 step product at night maybe not so much in the morning but you know anywho step one in our skincare routine is figuring out what type of skin you have is it oily is it dry is it a combination of both is it normal how do you know <laughs> Kind of how you can tell is you could just like look at your skin, um, maybe take the day and like don't wear anything and just, you know, do nothing to your skin and see, do you notice by the end of the day are you really oily? Do you, does your skin feel really tight? Does it feel really dry? Do you have patches where your like makeup rubs off a lot quicker than other times? It's like you find you're more oily in the T-zone but like your cheeks are dry and your rest of your skin is dry and like because I have personally have combination skin. So my skin is oilier in my T-zone, which is my forehead, um, nose, and chin is kind of your T-zone. And then my cheeks are more dry, So, but it's also, they're a bit oily too, so I do have combo skin because there's parts of my skin that are super dry, but my skin's like super dry, but like also really oily, so it like overcompensates for the fact of being really dry by producing a lot of oils to help moisturize it. It's kind of, so... There, let me ramble on for five hours about what my skin hair type is. So after you've identified what type of skincare, what not type of skincare, what kind of skin you have, and there's also like tons of quizzes online too that you can do to be like, what kind of skin do you have kind of thing, and it'll kind of tell you, um, which usually ends up being like they're promoting like their product to you, being like, oh, this product will work good for your skin, and our product that we have for you will work for our skin kind of thing, instead of like, I wish there was just like, I don't know what I'm talking about, but like somewhere where it's like not all like here's the product we think will work best for you. Like this is out of our product range, you know, kind of thing. It was kind of just like, anyways, I don't know what I'm saying. I'll continue on. So the next step, and once you identify what kind of skincare you, not skincare, what kind of skin you have is what do you want out of your products? Is that what it is? No. What are your skin concerns? That's what I want. So what are the things that you're concerned about on your face? Is it dryness? Is it being super oily? Is it um, anti-aging products? Is it redness, acne, uneven skin tone, dark circles? I'm reading off a list because I can't remember off the top of my head. Doll looking skin, um, ros rosacea, uneven skin tone, redness. I think I've already said majority of this. Dry, oily, acne, wrinkles. That kind of thing is that basically once you've identified what you want, what skin issues, what concerns you have with your skin, what issues you have with your skin, and what you want to do to fix them. Like, do you want you notice that like you want a firming or your skin? Do you, know, you want to make your skin firm? I forgot firm in there too, for because I don't really have that issue because I've got young skin because I'm only 22, so my skin my skin's still pretty firm. I'm messing up the word skin with skim. Perfect, Jenna. Just wait off to a great start. 
So once you've addressed what kind of skin concern that you have with your skin and things that you want to change and things you don't like about your skin, do you have hyperpigmentation, acne scarring, like stuff like that too. It's also another thing, just as an example. Um, number three, what I have written down, this is kind of just my own personal, how I kind of built my own skincare thing. Um, is there anything you want to avoid in your skincare? So is there anything that you've read recently online that you're like, mm, like parabens, mineral oils, like all the like things that you hear that you're not supposed to have in your skincare, like sulfates, stuff like that. I try to personally avoid um, parabens. Um, I like it to be preferably, I prefer products that are cruelty free. I'm not completely cruelty free by any means but I like it um better I like that product more and I'm more willing to choose it over something that's not cruelty free kind of thing that's just something I like to look for I also like to make sure that there's no drying alcohols in there I don't know the exact list right off the top of my head but I can leave it down in the description box below or post it here now is kind of what is a drying alcohol and what's not a drying alcohol based on what I found online kind of thing because I'm not a professional But those are just some of the things that I like to avoid. Or if you know there's certain items that irritate your skin as well, try to avoid those as well. Parabens are supposed to be bad for us too. I think they cause cancer or something. I don't know. But that's something like if you're concerned about that stuff or you want to avoid those things, that could be something to um, look for in your skincare as well when you're looking for certain things that... Um, you're trying to avoid. So number four I have written down for look look for products that do the stuff you want and what I mean by that is look for products that claim to be anti-aging, um, that help with acne, that help with uneven skin tone, that if you have dry skin or oily skin or combination skin, look for products that kind of are geared towards that type of skin. Um, so if you have acne prone skin, look for products that are geared towards like acne prone skin. So, you know, something that like doesn't clog your pores or something um, that doesn't like flare up or if you have a certain thing, I don't know what I'm saying, like you want something anti-aging, so looking for something with like retinol in it. You can also do like research and stuff about things on your own as to what products you might want or like what ingredients you might want in your skincare. For example, if you have acne prone skin, which a lot of people do, um, you want to look for something with like salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide, which these products can like dry out your skin. And I think um, nicinamide as well is supposed to be a good one for acne prone skin as well because that also helps something to do uneven skin tone. Same with vitamin C, it helps brighten your skin and helps with uneven skin tone as well. Like stuff like that, you can kind of... Um, Google, your, find your main skin concerns and then kind of Google what works with those like anti-aging would be retinol, um, acne prone skin would be acid, like a salicylic acid, um, vitamin C, acetamide, benzo peroxide, but those things can dry out your skin too. So you do want something that's going to be hydrating like um, hyaluronic acid is supposed to be really good to hydrate the skin. Um, things like glycolic um, acids are supposed to be good to exfoliate the skin and help um, with cell turnover that's also retinol as well and like just help um, exfoliate and remove all the dead skin cells so your skin doesn't your pores don't get clogged as well and there's a whole controversy over chemical exfoliants versus physical exfoliants and how physical exfoliants are very harsh on your skin and you shouldn't be using those little microbeads because they can cause micro tearing microscopic tearing on your skin and stuff I don't know. That's just what I've read and heard from over the years, uh, not over the years, a couple of years that I've been really into skincare and what I've read on people's blogs, blogs. Everyone seems to have a different opinion, so I guess kind of just do your research and form your own opinion. After you find that, so like looking for things that are actually like geared towards your skin, I can't give you like a list of every single thing, but that's like something you can like, you can do, you know, your own research and find products that you think that are going to work well for your skin. Like a few of them I mentioned, those are the big ones that I use is because I have that kind of skin. I have um, combination oily to dry and um, acne prone skin is basically my huge skin concern and uneven skin tone, uneven skin because I have 
my hyperpigmentation. I'm pretty sure it's from my acne scarring as well and stuff like that. So those things that are kind of how I gear my skincare towards to be. Um, so I have number five is do research to find out products you think would work for your skin with your skin budget. I know that sounds like a lot of work to do some research and like looking into things that, um, you know, just looking for products that you think might work well for your skin, um, you know, taking quizzes online to try to figure out, you know, where to start, um, because it can be overwhelming going into the drugstore or even Sephora and not knowing what products you want, where to start, so, you know, that can be something you can read reviews online. I can leave down a really great blog, um, who I think she is, like, the queen of skincare, like, she does a really good in-depth about, um, like skincare routines and stuff. I just, I love her. I love her. I think she's like the queen of skincare. Like she does amazing advice and stuff. And that's where I found out a lot of my information from too. So you want to like find like trusted sources as well or just read reviews online and watch YouTube videos on reviews and things and just figure out what people liked and didn't like and for what reasons and stuff kind of thing. I don't know. I mean, everyone's skin is different. So what worked for one person may not work for you kind of thing. Like what works for me may not work for you as well. So just keep that in mind as well. But you know, what I mean by doing research is like looking up and figuring out and kind of having an idea maybe of what items you want in your skincare when you go and buy them. Like if you want a vitamin C cream, that makes it kind of easier to look and be like, okay, these are vitamin C or have vitamin C in them. That's what I want. So maybe I'll go look for more that area instead of being like, oh, I don't know, like this one's this anti-aging. What's the difference between this anti-aging product and that anti-aging product? Kind of find like what anti-aging item you want and see for anti-aging. I know it's a big one. Like you want maybe something with a retinol in it. So look and see if it has a retinol something moisturizing, maybe try to see if it has hyaluronic acid in it, um, doll like brightening your skin, look and see if it has a vitamin C in it, kind of something like that, or an acne product, see if it has salicylic acid in it, um, within your budget as well, like make up a budget of, or you know, maybe you have a budget of like how much you're willing to spend on skincare, and so that may also what kind of brand you go for or like you don't have to keep picking like sticking with one specific brand and some of them have kits out there too that are like oh it's good for this but sometimes you just want to like mix and match from like one thing to another You're like oh I heard this product was really good I might pick up this one from this brand and this one from this brand you don't have to stick just within a certain brand if you like to you can go for it um but like I like to mix and match mine from like certain brands like I feel like I don't know anyways <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. So once you kind of do all that research and stuff, it's like, well now what kind of items do I need? How I like doing my skincare, I have my morning skincare routine and my night skincare routine and they're somewhat different. Some products overlap and stuff, some don't, just depending on um, the type of product and what I like to use in the morning versus what I like to use at night. So in the morning, you want to have something of a cleanser, something to rinse off your face. You don't want this to be a super harsh cleanser on your skin either, um, something gentle. I like to personally use a micellar water in the morning um, just to clean off the stuff, the gunk of my skin when I went to bed because the night before, I did a very thorough clean because I was wearing makeup. So I just kind of, if I'm going to wear makeup that day, I kind of want to clean layer um, to my skincare on and then do my makeup because I feel like my skin, if I use cleansers in the morning and night it gets too stripped and over dried and like it's too dry I just like I, my skin doesn't need that intense of a cleaning um, even with a gentle cleanser I just find it because I'm just trying to take off the sweat and gross stuff that I've accumulated over the night as opposed to during the day you've been outside and are exposed to a lot more dirt and debris and just wearing your makeup and stuff so the nighttime I find is more what I use for intense or cleaning um, so after that, I used a toner for the morning. So I like to do um, cleanser, which is my micellar water, a toner of some kind, either hydrating or, you know, something to rebalance your skin. Toners help to rebalance your skin. I think input, like, 
the stuff that like reset the pH balance from what a cleanser can like take away the pH balance. The toner is supposed to help reset a pH balance. I'm not 100% sure. There's lots of research you guys can do on the internet of your own to figure out what exactly a toner does is what I just like for myself. And then serum, which I use up to three serums in the morning. It just depends on the product you have and um, what you want to use it for. So I use a serum up to three in the morning because like I said, I like to do an intense skincare routine. I have more of a high maintenance skincare routine than a low maintenance. And then SPF to um, help protect my skin from the sun. Yeah, that makes sense, yes. I want to protect my skin from the sun. I don't want it to get early wrinkled, age spots, skin cancer, you know, UVA rays. I just want to protect my skin from the sun. And then finally, I use a moisturizer and then I'll go on to makeup if I'm putting makeup on that day. That's kind of what I do in the morning as kind of my morning skincare routine. This is like, there's lots of other routines out there and you can like tweak it to however you want it. But I find in the night, that's where I do a lot more treatment based things and a lot more intense things. Like I'll do face masks, sheet masks and stuff like that at night as opposed to in the morning. Because I find at night I have a more time to do stuff and I just kind of like relaxing and unwinding and like do my skincare and being like, oh, I'm just gonna sit here for like 20 minutes and do my skincare kind of thing. Um, not that you need to take 20 minutes to do your skincare. I just like to do an intense round of skincare, basically. <laughs> I also like to sit in between um, products. I like to wait at least two minutes in between products before I put them on. I don't always have the time to do that, but I do like to. Maybe not so much in the morning, but at night I really do try to wait two minutes at least in between my skincare items just so they have a bit more chance to sink in before I pile more on to my face, kind of. On to my evening, what I use in the evening. So the first thing I use is some kind of makeup remover, whether that be makeup removing wipes that I just so happen to have next to me, or like a micellar water, or like a makeup cleanser, or an oil cleanser, or a cleansy balm cleanser, or some kind of cleanser to remove my first layer of makeup. Sometimes I do um, eye makeup removing and then I do an eye makeup removing wipe thing. You always want it when you have makeup on or just any time at night. You also want to, especially when you're wearing makeup, do a double cleanse. So you want to take off your makeup and then after you've taken off all your makeup, actually cleanse your skin underneath because all you've done for the first part is just remove your makeup and sometimes you still have bits of makeup left on and you just can't see it and you think your skin is clean and then you get clogged pores because you haven't actually been properly taking off your makeup. So double cleansing is especially important. What I like to do is I will either use um, a cleansing oil or a makeup removing wipe if I'm feeling lazy and just really want to quickly hop in the shower. But you should always be removing your makeup off before you go to bed, people. It's very important. You will get clogged pores. It's just like you don't want to go to bed at all with makeup on. You probably will, you will wake up with zits the next day. You know, it's not a good idea. If the least you can do is take a makeup wipe to your face before you fall asleep in bed as opposed to be like makeup wipe and no makeup wipe and just falling asleep with makeup on, then use a makeup wipe. But you really should be using something more intense than a makeup wipe to remove your makeup off. If you're not doing a second cleanse, you should at least be doing like cleansing oil or a cleansing balm or a cleansing milk, some kind of cleanser to really break down the makeup. And then possibly once that is done, if you know, if you don't like to use a makeup wipe or you don't like to do a second cleanse, just take your cleanser over a second time and use it. But ideally you should be using two different cleansers um, for your makeup removing, like your cleaning your face. It can be the same cleanser you use in the morning and at night, or you can use a different one. <laughs> um, someone's analogy, I think it was Catherine Highlands. If you can afford two different pairs, if you can afford, afford more than one pair of shoes, you can afford um, a second cleanser, like more than one cleanser kind of thing. She was like, if you can afford one, more than one pair of shoes, you can afford a pair of a second cleanser, basically is what she said. I think somewhere in her blog, I could be wrong, but I think that's what she said. The next thing I do is after I've cleansed my face, I do a second cleanse with um, maybe a milky cleanser or a jelly balm cleanser or something to cleanse my skin as well. I want something gentle on my skin that isn't over stripping. You don't want your skin to feel like squeaky clean afterwards either because it means it's stripped your skin too much and that is not something you want to do. You want to do something gentle and nice and you don't want your face when you get out of the shower to feel like the Sahara Desert, like it's been dry and like tight and you can't move it and stuff like that. So 
after you've cleansed your face, you can either use, um, which they say to avoid physical exfoliants, so you can use a chemical exfoliant, like there's a lot of research about those, like a BHA or an ALA, I'm not sure exactly what their difference, like what their, all the terms are, like a lactic acid or something, like I know I like to use glycolic acid, um, which I don't use that every day either because it's I haven't built up the tolerance to use it every day so you have to use it to, um, like start off once a week and then you can slowly build it up but then they say don't exfoliate your skin more than like twice a week but I find I get like under the skin like clogged pores if I don't if I'm not like exfoliating my skin every couple of days I find because I have acne prone and more oily skin and I do wear a lot like I wear makeup and stuff so I find like I get these little like clogged pores kind of bumps all over my face so I have to kind of exfoliate my skin a lot more because I find otherwise if I don't do it my skin gets like clogged my pores get clogged so you know it's all personal after that I like to use a toner again um, some people like to use toners and essence it depends on how high maintenance you want to be but I find a toner is good just to kind of restore the pH balance of your skin and stuff um, then you want to use a serum. These ones, serums, the difference between a serum and a moisturizer, serums are like your treatment products, like the things you want to use for anti-aging, um, putting more moisture in your skin, acne products, stuff like that. Like these are your treatment targeted things as well um, that you want to use. This is when you want to put them on when you've got your before you put on a heavy moisturizer so that they're right on your skin they're much easier to, for them to soak into your skin and stuff I use up to three at night so it just depends on what I want to use that night um, but I use, use an acne product one I use a hydrating treatment and an anti-aging one possibly a retinol you can use retinol but you want to be careful you want to slowly build up your tolerance if you use it too much and your skin starts to peel and flake it means you need to cut down because it's just too much for your skin so start using once a week and see how well your skin works for about a month and then slowly increase it to two to three to four to five um, or depending on if you use over-the-counter retinols too then you just want to follow the directions of the box or whatever your doctor tells you because you know I'm not a doctor so I clearly don't know you know whatever your doctor says follow that um, but that's what I like to use and then I like to use a moisturizer after that something really hydrating um, that's going to really hydrate my skin and ha take a long time to sink in. I really like that. Um, and then I like to use a face oil, which a lot of people with oily skin don't like to use a face oil because they're like, oh, put oil on an oily face. But what you really want to do with the oil, it's supposed to help soothe your face and not have it be so oily to help kind of because your face is so dry that your body is producing more oil to compensate for the fact that your skin is really dry. And also apparently if you have really super oily skin, you're less likely to have, like your wrinkles won't be, like it'll take longer for your skin to get wrinkles because it's so hydrated that like um, you'll have less wrinkles or something or like the wrinkles won't set in as quickly as other people's. As someone who has dry skin, their wrinkles are really more predominant and show up faster than someone with oily skin, I guess. I think I'm, if I'm saying that right, if it makes sense, to, it makes sense to you guys. I've been rambling on for a while. <laughs> so um, you want to use some kind of face oil, something that's going to hydrate your skin. Um, I like to put it at the end right before I'm going to bed and then I like let it to sink into my skin when I'm while I'm sleeping and stuff. If you're worried about it getting on your pillow, don't put it right before you, like the second you're about to jump into bed, wait maybe 5, 10, 15 minutes before you actually top into bed to let it kind of be absorbed into your skin because with the oil too, I think they were saying that it kind of helps drive the rest of the products deeper into your skin with putting an oil. It kind of seals everything up so you want to put your oil on last because it will block everything else so you don't want your expensive serums and things to be put on you put your oil on and then not let them be able to be absorbed into your skin so you want to put the more if that makes sense um because the oil kind of like blocks it and like sinks everything in and takes everything in as opposed to everything else which just kind of sit on your skin if you put the oil on first instead of everything else so yeah <laughs> that is basically in a nutshell how to build your own um skincare routine i can leave the steps down below um you can take this however you want to i know there's a lot of videos on youtube talking about skincare and a lot of vlogs talking about skincare and there's a lot of controversy out there of what you should and shouldn't use so basically do your own research figure out what you think will work best for your skin and 
go from there. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll try my best to answer them, but like I said, I'm not like a dermatologist. I don't work in the skincare industry. I'm just really like skincare and I've just recently started getting into it. So I'm not the best person of knowledge. I feel like the best option would be to go out and do your own research and things because there's a lot of controversy over things so I guess kind of just pick your own opinion and form your own opinion and make kind of one of an educated guess and just you know do your research and <laughs> figure out which is out there because there's a lot of stuff out there and also it doesn't mean high-end products are not necessarily going to have the best ingredients as well if you're on a budget I know a really great skincare company that I really like to use it's called the ordinary I'll link them down below not sponsored hence why I have not really talked about any certain product or cleanser if you want me to go in more detail about any item I can um, but I feel like, again, there's a lot more better, knowledgeable people out there on YouTube making kind of these videos. I just kind of wanted to put it out there because I'm like, it's hard to figure out, like, what skincare routine kind of works for you. I know there's a lot of quizzes online, but they always give you, like, just their brands kind of skincare stuff. And I'm like, well, no, I want to know what will, like, work best for my personal skin. Um, so, yeah, it's a lot of, I feel like, trial and error to find out the perfect... Um, combination that works well for your skin and stuff so unfortunately that's just kind of the way it is it's kind of like that with medicine too it's kind of like well what works for one person doesn't always work for this person so like this drug may work well for someone but this drug may not work well for you so you may have to like just figure out kind of you know for example like antidepressants or something one antidepressant might work well for someone but it might not work with your chemistry your brain chemistry and your stuff like that so just kind of it's like trial and error basically you know Getting samples is probably a good idea to go into Sephora and, you know, get a sample of the product and then you can take it home for a couple days and see how well it works and stuff. And if it breaks you out, don't buy the full size kind of thing like that. So they do say take, um, introducing skincare slowly. Try, don't just like bombard it, like introduce a whole bunch all at once. You kind of want to do it slowly within seven days or something. Every seven days you can kind of introduce a new skincare item when you're first trying to build your skincare routine and stuff by no means do you have to have like a 10 step skincare routine but you know um I just really like skincare so I have a lot of steps in my skincare routine but this is kind of like a basic um skincare routine so I hope you guys enjoyed this video I hope you found it helpful I'll see you guys later goodbye we got to fireflies bye